grips with the same speed. Sometimes you find the news, and sometimes the news finds you. All stations can keep up. At a Dubai FM, we not only give you news at the speed of nanosecond, but we also break it down with up-to-date analysis, informed opinions, and dixed in professionalism. That's why you love us. At a Dubai FM, your go-to station. It's midday. Good afternoon. I am Olabisi Olani Yolua Shegun with Global News in the News. APP withdraws petition challenging Tinubu's victory. Africa's oldest synagogue witnesses gone attack. In Pakistan, former Prime Minister appears in court amid protests. This is the news. Now the news in detail. The Action People's Party, APP, has applied to withdraw its petition challenging the victory of President-elect Ashwaju Bola Tinubu at the 2023 general elections. The counsel to the APP, Obed Agu, also asked the court to strike out and dismiss the suit. Agu said he was working on the instructions of his client. In a reaction, counsel to Tinubu, Wale Olani Pekun, said he and his client are not opposing the application for withdrawal, adding that they also are not asking for cost. Chairman of the panel, Justice Aruna Samani, subsequently dismissed the suit with no cost attached. The APP was challenging the presidential election on the grounds of alleged non-compliance with the electoral laws as well as INIC guidelines. Following the dismissal, the court rose and will reconvene at 2 p.m. for the Labour Party suits. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board said it will ensure that Nigerian students evacuated from war-torn Sudan are integrated into the nation's universities. The JAMB Registrar, Professor Ishak Oluyede, made this known on Tuesday in Abuja during a meeting with the head of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa. In a statement issued on Wednesday, Oluyede, who empathized with the students, commended NITCOM for the effective handling of their evacuation, adding that JAMB would ensure the desired support. However, the JAM boss called on the students not to tread the path of those who returned to the country over a year ago as a result of Ukraine's war, but refused to comply with the stipulated procedures that would have ensured that they continue their academic program seamlessly in Nigerian universities. Meanwhile, female Muslim students from five schools in the Gambia have taken legal action against their schools at the High Court in Banjul after accusing them of forcefully removing their veils. Some of the schools in the lawsuit are Christian, but most of their students are Muslims. The pupil said the alleged actions of their schools caused them emotional distress and embarrassment and are demanding compensation of more than $300,000. The students added that the alleged incident violated their fundamental human rights and subjected them to harassment. They are also demanding authorities pass a law to allow them wear veils in schools. The Gambia is a majority Muslim country but also has a minority Christian population. Democratic Republic of Congo's president, Felix Tshisekedi, has said the East African Community Regional Force will be pulled out from the country's east if it fails to fulfill its peacemaking mandate by June. He made the revelation in Botswana, where he is on a state visit on Tuesday. The ESCRF was deployed in the region in March to help quell the March 23 movement rebellion, but has since been criticized for failing to force the rebels to relinquish territory. President Tshikedi also expressed frustration with the regional force, which he said was not operating as DR Congo had expected and was allegedly colluding with the rebels. His remark came a day after the Southern African Development Community bloc agreed to deploy troops 
with offensive mandate to Eastern DR Congo. Two visitors and two security guards have been killed in a gun attack near Africa's oldest synagogue on the Tunisian island of Jarba. The attack took place during an annual pilgrimage to the island, which attracts Jewish visitors from Europe and Israel. A guard reportedly shot dead his partner before opening fire on visitors and security forces near the synagogue before being killed himself. One of the visitors killed is a French national, while the other is a dual citizen of Tunisia and Israel. Israel's foreign ministry said the two were cousins. Four other visitors and five members of the security forces were also injured. The United States has announced a new $1.2 billion military aid package for Ukraine that will include air defense systems, conventional artillery and counter-drone ammunition, satellite imagery services, and funding for military training. In the package announced on Tuesday, Ukraine will also receive technology to allow the integration of Western air defense launchers, missiles, and radar with Ukraine's native air defense systems. The Russians have launched waves of missiles into Ukraine, whose military has been adept at knocking them down. Ukrainian cities have come under renewed aerial attack in the past week with the scores of Russian missiles and drones targeting Kyiv and other key cities. So far in the fiscal year 2023, which runs from October the 1st last year to September the 30th, the U.S. Department of Defense has provided $5 billion in security assistance to Kyiv under the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative in four separate tranches. You're on to Global News from Adaba 88.9 FM, Akure transmitting from Ilara Moki. After the break, you'll find out why Pakistani ex-Prime Minister Imran Khan appeared in court. Join us again in the second part of the bulletin. Thank you for staying tuned for news updates and live streaming. Visit our website www.adaba889.fm or download Adaba FM app on Google Play Store. You can be part of us on our social media platforms www.facebook.com forward slash Adaba FM. 88.9 on Facebook at Adaba 889 FM on Instagram and Twitter and Adaba FM TV on YouTube. You can also provide us information via email newsroom at Adaba 889.fm. And now to the rest of the news. A jury in a civil case has found former President Donald Trump sexually abused a magazine columnist in a New York department store in the 1990s. However, Mr. Trump was found not liable for raping Jeanne Carroll in the dressing room of Bagdorf Goodman. The jury also found Mr. Trump liable for defamation, for calling the writer's accusations a hoax and a lie. It is the first time Mr. Trump has been found legally responsible for a sexual assault. The Manhattan jury ordered Mr. Trump to pay her about $5 million in damages. The jury of six men and three women reached their decision after less than three hours of deliberations on Tuesday. Because the trial was in civil court rather than criminal, Mr. Trump will not be required to register as a sex offender. The former president, who has denied Ms. Cara's accusations, did not attend a two-week civil trial in the Manhattan Federal Court. Ms. Caro held the hands of both her lawyers as the verdict was read in court and smiled as she was awarded damages by the jury. The Palestinian Health Ministry says Israeli forces have killed two Palestinians in the occupied West Bank a day after Israel pounded the Gaza Strip with missiles that killed 15 people in separate attacks over several hours. 
The health ministry identified the slain man as Ahmad Jamal Asaf and Warani Walid Kantanat, who were shot by Israeli soldiers in Kabatia town south of Jenin. Earlier in the day, 40 Israeli military aircraft, including drones, carried out a series of early morning missile attacks on Gaza, killing at least 13 people, including three members of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement, as well as their wives, several children and other civilians. About 20 people were also injured, some in critical condition in the Israeli air attacks that left residential buildings ablaze in central Gaza City and reduced others to rubble. According to Palestinian figures, at least 123 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces so far this year, while 19 Israelis have also been killed in separate attacks during the same period. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has appeared before a judge a day after his arrest on corruption charges packed nationwide protests. Police say nearly 1,000 people have been arrested since Mr. Khan was held in Islamabad on charges which he denies. There is tight security of the police guest house where he is being detained, which is serving as a courtroom. The arrest dramatically escalated a political battle between Mr. Khan and Pakistan's powerful military. Conviction would disqualify him from standing for election. At least two people died in violent protests that broke out in several cities across Pakistan following his arrest on Tuesday. The former international cricket star was ousted last April, less than four years into his term as Prime Minister. In our sports, Arsenal women will play an increased number of league fixtures at the Emirates next season after attracting record crowds in the last 12 months. Jenna's Adol's team will play five women's Super League matches at the men's stadium in 2023-2024, up from three matches this season. The Gunners recently sold out the Emirates for the second leg of their Champions League semi-final against Wolfsburg. With 60,063 fans watching them narrowly lose in extra time. That attendance broke the record for a European fixture in the UK, but the club also made history when 47,367 fans watched them beat Tottenham 4 0 in the WSL in September. Should they qualify for the competition again, they will likely play all their matches at the men's stadium once again. And now to end global news, a recap of our top stories. A gun attack near Africa's soldier synagogue on the Tunisian island of Jerba has killed two visitors and two security guards. In a bid to save money for priority areas, Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni has called for a ban on overseas travels by members of parliament and civil servants. And finally, we told you that Pakistan's former Prime Minister, Imran Khan, has appeared before a judge amid protests. That's Global News. It was edited by Adiola Dekunle. I am Olabisi Olani Yolua Shegun. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon. The world moves at a fast pace and news breaks with the same speed. Sometimes you find the news and sometimes...